Hello again, welcome to Compute 175. Today we will talk about the call stack. The call stack, also called the runtime stack, is a special data structure used during the execution of a program to store information about the active subroutines or methods of a computer program being executed. Some call it the execution stack or the program stack. At least they all agree it's a stack. The first, that is, pushed in is the last to be popped out. So obviously we store something in this stack, but what? We store stack frames. What are these? The primary purpose of the call stack is to store the return address of the caller of a method to be executed. If a method A invokes a method B, after the execution of B we need to return to the execution of A. The call stack comes to the rescue. A method may also have parameters, so these parameters are also stored in the stack frame pushed onto the call stack when the method is invoked. Moreover, a method may have its own values stored in local variables, variables known only within the method with a limited scope. These variables exist only when the method is being executed and their values are not retained after the execution of the method is finished. All these local variables are also in the stack frame of the method. So the stack frame of a method A is pushed to the call stack when the method is invoked and popped out when the method terminates. Suppose we have a program with some methods. Of course, we have the main method, but we have other methods. Let's call them A, B, C, D and E. These methods are of course not executed sequentially, they are executed when they are called. For example, the main method may call method A and method B. Method A would call method C. Method C would call D and E. The call tree could look like this. Main call A and B, A call C, and C calls D and E. When we execute our program, it could also be visualized like this. At one point, method A is invoked. After it is executed, method B at some point would be also called. When A calls C, and C in turn is called D and E, it would be visualized like this. During the execution, and we will illustrate the execution with an arrow, so I'm now inside the main method, what happens is that inside the call stack, we have now pushed what we call a call frame of the main method. And that frame basically contains the environment of that main method, the local variables and so forth. As soon as you call another method, for example here I continue the execution and I call the method A, then I have another call frame that is added to my runtime stack with the local variables of the method A. What's the purpose of this? Well, the runtime stack shows you what are the last methods that call this method. But also, when you finish the execution of a method, you can go back where you left off with the previous method. So here I'm in method A. Um, later, um, I will go to method C and I have a call frame for C pushed in my call stack. I continue my execution and I'm now inside method D and the same happens. A call frame for D is pushed to my call stack. And if I have, for example, an error in my method D and a message will be displayed to me, uh, the call frames inside my runtime stack will also be displayed. Here, for example, I will see that main had an error at line 1 uh, when calling method A, which had an error at line 2 when calling method C, which in turn when calling method D at line 2, and, and, and within method D I had a print I where I is unknown. So this allows me to see, thanks to the call stack, what happened, what caused the error and where. So let's assume we didn't have an error. We continue after I finish method D and I'm still inside uh, C. The stack frame for D is popped out of, this, of the call stack with all its local variables. 
Now I can continue with method C where I left off. If I enter method E, it is, uh, well, its call frame is pushed in the stack. When I finish method E and I'm still in C, the frame of method E is popped. I finish method C and I'm still in method A. Method C call frame is popped. Now I finish with method A and I'm still in the main method. That's why I have the call frame for main on top of my stack. And enter method B and method B call frame is pushed onto the stack. When I finish method B, its call frame is removed. And at the end, my stack is empty. So that's the runtime stack. We have uh, call frames in our, uh, that are pushed in the runtime stack. And at any given time, I know which method is being executed and which method, is, uh, which method actually called it. So in this video, we talked about a special data structure called stack that is used during the execution of a program to store the environment of a method being executed. This data structure contains the whole context of the program being executed with all the methods that haven't terminated yet. In a sequence and in indicating who called who, basically. In addition, we have for each method its own context, including local variables, etc. When debugging a program, we can see the sequence of calls and the values of variables in each method. Moreover, if our program crashes, the call stack assists in identifying the problem and where it occurred.